here at 96th Street and Park, where the tracks come out of the tunnel under Park Avenue. Here they quickly move onto the Park Avenue viaduct. In the distance, you can see the yellow crane of the viaduct construction project. The Park Avenue Railroad Viaduct was originally built in the late 19th century to accommodate the growing number of railroad lines entering Manhattan from the north. Construction on the viaduct began in 1871 and was completed in 1873 to connect Grand Central Terminal to the Harlem River. The viaduct was designed by engineer John B. Snook and architect Alfred B. Mullet for the New York Central and Hudson River Railroad. The viaduct was constructed using a combination of stone, brick, and iron with elegant arches and decorative elements that showcased the architectural style of the time. Over the years, the Park Avenue Railroad Viaduct has undergone several renovations and repairs to maintain its structural integrity and accommodate changes in railroad operations. The viaduct plays a crucial role in the transportation network of the city, facilitating movement of passengers and goods between Manhattan and the surrounding areas. In recent years, the viaduct has faced challenges due to wear and tear from constant use and exposure to the elements. As a result, there has been a need for reconstruction and restoration to ensure that the viaduct remains safe and functional for commuters and residents alike. The Park Avenue Viaduct carries all commuter trains from the northern suburbs into New York City. The reconstruction of the viaduct must be done on weekends and late at night to avoid conflict with the many, many commuter trains. The vertical metal piers supporting the tracks are weakened from aging and they need to be replaced before they fail. The solution they came up with to solve this problem is to cast new concrete piers under the viaduct. Once the concrete hardens, they will use two huge cranes to lower the girders onto the new pilings. The cranes sit on the road surface of Park Avenue, straddling the four-track wide right-of-way. The cranes can come apart to move them. This type of crane is used more for intermodal container movement. The wheeled base sections are movable separately and are very maneuverable. When I visited, one of the cranes was dismantled. Over the course of the summer, the whole section of the viaduct that is supported by metal will be changed from the old metal support to the new concrete support. The main locomotives used by Metro North are the GE Genesis series of diesel electric locomotives. The Gen Genesis series locomotives are equipped with powerful diesel engines that generate electricity to power electric traction motors, enabling them to move heavy trains at high speeds. The Metro North also operates dual mode locomotives, such as the Alstrom P32 AC DM locomotives, which have the capability to run on both diesel fuel and electric power. The dual mode locomotives are equipped with panographs to collect electricity from overhead cantonary wires, as well as pickup shoes for use on electrified tracks and diesel engines for operation on non-electrified lines. The dual mode locomotives provide flexibility for Metro North trains to operate on various types of rail infrastructure. In addition to the GE Genesis and Alstrom P32 locomotives, Metro North also utilizes other modes of locomotive for manufacturers such as EMD and Bombardier. These locomotives are designed to meet specific operational requirements of Metro North, including performance, efficiency, and environmental standards. 2023 was the 40th anniversary of Metro North Railroad, and several locomotives have been wrapped in heritage paint schemes of railroads that used to operate on the lines and now operated by Metro North. In this video, there are New Haven, Penn Central, and Conrail painted locomotives. I didn't catch the Metro North Beach Ball, the New York Central, or the PC Patched New Haven. Here you can really see one of those cranes. And here's the concrete piers that will replace the metal ones. See, they're cast in place, and then the cranes will 
change the location. Yeah, only one crane was up when I visited. Metro North operates two main types of electric multiple unit EMU trains, the M7 and the M8 trains. While both trains serve the Metro North commuter rail system in the New York metropolitan area, there are several key differences between the two models. The M7 was introduced in the late 1990s and they've been a staple of Metro North. The M7 trains are equipped with more comfortable seating than previous N-series cars, climate control systems, onboard restrooms, and overhead luggage racks for passenger convenience. The M7 trains also have fairly advanced safety features such as crash energy management systems and automatic train control. The M7s are distinguished by their blue ends and they operate on the Hudson Line to White Plain and to White Plains. Long Island Railroad also uses M7 EMUs, but theirs have yellow ends and operate out of Penn Station, as well as uh, Grand Central New Ma Grand Central Madison. The M8 trains are newer additions to the Metro North fleet, with the new units entering service in 2011. The M8 trains represent significant upgrade over the M7 trains in terms of technology and passenger comfort. Trains feature more spacious interior layout with wider aisles and improved seating arrangements. Here's the Conrail wrapped Genesis. The M8 trains also have enhanced climate control systems LED lighting, and digital information displays. In terms of performance, the M8 trains are equipped with regenerative braking technology, which helps reduce energy consumption and lower operating costs. The M8 trains also have improved acceleration and braking capabilities compared to the M7s, resulting in smoother and more efficient train operations. The M8s are distinguishable by their red ends and centered mohawk-like bumps on the roofs. I spent a fair amount of time at the 125th Street station making this because it's easy to see the trains as well as the cranes. The station is part of the viaduct and the interior of the train was restored about 10 years ago. It has nice stained wood surfaces inside. Nearly every train into and out of Grand Central stops at 125th. Thank you for watching to the end. If you like this video, consider subscribing. There's plenty more to come.